everybody out there listening to this show. This is the PlayStation Report. We're on episode 59. Oh, big old boys, we are here to serve you. Yeah. I am I I'm I'm uh, I'm Frank and and beside me is is a cool dude named Tyler. Say hello That's Tyler. Me. Uh what's up, man? You know, it's not nearly as much as up with you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know how much you want to talk about your life or anything on the show, but uh, all I'll say is that you're a lot busier man than I am. I am. I I, I would say I am a little too busy, to mm. be honest with you. It's driving me insane. Mm. I almost can't stand it. Like I just want to like curl up in a ball and be by myself. I I can't even imagine what that's like. I'm not. Yeah. I'm nowhere near doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, but no, no. I mean, life's life's good. Life's eventful, mm. for sure. Life finds a way. It does. I was at the beach though over the weekend, and it was really fucking cold. That's like the earliest I've ever really been to the beach, but it was like a free trip pretty much. So I was mm. like, fuck it, can't deny that. Road trip. But, uh, yeah but it was like 50 degrees and it was real real cold but then there's like nobody on the beach it's kind of kind of peaceful it's no screaming jackasses screaming children everywhere mm. it's all right sounds like a good place to be alone yeah exactly mm. yeah <sighs> what about you what's up well you know it's just you know sometimes you have one of those weeks that's good and then right after that, you have a week that's bad. And this is one of those bad weeks mm. where, like, I was just feeling down. I don't know yeah. why. It just happens yeah. once in a while. I just have a week where I'm feeling down. I'm trying to pick it up for the show right now, but just know that internally I'm crying right now. Maybe uh, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I am certainly not myself. But it's fine. It will go yeah, on. Well. If only I can be inside of you, I can make you feel a little better. I would, I would like that. Ah, ha ha ha! PlayStation report a show about video games. Oh man, PlayStation news, new games and stuff like that. Uh, we usually talk about what we've been playing. We didn't really write much down about the games we've been playing, Tyler. Have you, have you really even had time for games when you're busy ass life? Not too much. Just a little little Mass Effect. I'm going to finish Mass Effect Andromeda this weekend. Absolutely. I will have time this weekend. Uh, almost finished Elodin in like one go, in mm. like two hours. I just banged the shit out of almost everything on that planet. Um it's an okay planet. I think it's a little lame, though, to be honest with you, because you have Eos, mm-hmm. and you have Elden. It's like, is this all the Andromeda Galaxy is? No, it's not. You could be a little bit more creative than this, but you clearly ran out of time. Mm. So that's that. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to finish that this weekend. We'll play a little bit of Overwatch 2, which was fun, and then played some Battlefield 1. Oh, yeah, we did. That's about it. That's about all I played. That's what I want to talk about in Battlefield 1. Man, we had some fun playing Battlefield 1. We did. We played that fucking War Pigeons mode, man. Yeah. <laughs> we were and, you know, all I, chasing around birds and shit. Yeah, I, I mean, when I got on and you said you were playing Battlefield 1, I'm like, I really feel like playing that game. I'll play. And I'm like, what do you want to play? And you're like, well, I've been playing War Pigeons. And I'm like, all right, sure. <laughs> I mean, all I've played is Conquest and Operations Dude, in that yeah. game, but I'll be honest with you, it's a blast. Yeah, it's it's I mean, probably it their coolest small-scale game, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm. I mean, it's cool to just have... It's fun because it's it's still chaotic, but it's not extremely chaotic, and it's everybody's kind of focused on one thing... And, and all kinds of stuff, and there's a little bit, there's obviously strategy involved with it and stuff, and it can be really, really intense. I kind of like how 
the matches can theoretically go on for like ever. Mm-hmm. It feels like like you could play for 15 minutes and nobody has scored anything, you know, because you're just trying to figure out how to outplay each other. And it's also cool to like I love the maps in that game. I think they're beautiful. They're a lot of fun to play. But it was cool to just play smaller, more focused chunks. Uh, they're still the same map, but, but it was still fun. To, to utilize that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. I like that game, man. I really do. Oh yeah, it's it's a it's a good one. Um the thing I like most about War Pigeons is that it's like what it does is it has this objective that can be moving around any part of the map. So you're really exploring these maps in depth like there yeah. you you could be at any the objective could be anywhere on the map. Yeah. And it it's it I just like uh game modes that do that that let you that uh reward you for like Trying out a new area of the map, seeing maybe if you can hold the pigeon there and hold yeah. hold people off there. Like, there are certain areas that we were holding up as a defensive point where, like, during a normal game of anything else, you just don't really hold up that defensive point. And it's just, it's yeah. just really cool to see how, like, how the maps are designed. Like, there are certain points where it could be, like, it's almost like a trench. The, there was this one drop off on, like, a ledge coming from the rail yard on the Argon Forest map and there was like the, the rail y- the railroad and then it dropped off into like a sort of like a trench mm-hmm. and like you you'd like pop over and like sh- shoot them as they're like charging across and it it, lo- it just it looks like what they were showing in the trailers like that that kind of warfare <laughs> that, yeah. that kind of world war 1 like over the top over yeah. the top I like how they uh, did this mode where if you're running around, you, you, like, as you hold the pigeon, you're not actually, like, holding a legitimate pigeon and stuff. But uh, this timer basically starts where you're writing a message. Yeah, I put that in quotes. And uh, so if you're running around or moving, the the timer goes slower. But if you're staying still, it goes quicker. So it does bring in to like really cool uh, moments of like now your whole team is rallying around you and you're hiding behind one wall just trying to hold everybody off while this person uh, writes the message quicker to send it off. But then uh, you might get that part done, but then when you go to release the pigeon to actually score, the other team can shoot it down. That's where it gets very intense and uh, – I like it. I want to play a lot more of it, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was really fucking fun. Uh, it just felt good to get back in the groove with that game. Oh, yeah. like I, I got me... I, I forget what rifle it is exactly, but uh, it's in the medic class, and it is just so good. Motherfucker. I can't believe I'm blanking on it, but... but uh, because I've basically been using the standard weapons that you start all the classes with, and I basically had a ton of uh, points saved up to buy shit. So I just bought a bunch of shit. I got this rifle for the medic. Badass. I love the single fire weapons in that game. Mm. So good. Because you can really... It's just so satisfying, even if you're not a sniper, but you're like at a good distance and you're timing your shots. You're kind of leading the person on. They have no clue where you are. And then you just pick them off and you hear the headshot sound go off and... That game could be very satisfying with with moments like that. Oh man, yeah, I, w- I was mostly rolling uh, with the scout rifle. The uh, the it was I used the infantry version of the of the sniper rifles. They don't have scopes. You use you're using the iron sights and stuff, but that's yeah. fine on those smaller maps. Like I I found myself actually counter sniping people who had scopes because I guess apparently having a scope like reduces your fire rate. I guess the bolt action is slower if you have to deal with a scope. I don't know the logic behind that, but I just saw myself like getting more shots off and getting more headshots. There was this match I had. I had 11 headshots. Wow. Now that's a lot of headshots. That is a lot of headshots. That's 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 mm-hmm. pretty good. Um speaking of Battlefield 1. Yeah. Dice just announced today the spring update. It's coming to the game. So I'm just going to rattle off a few things here. They're bringing platoons in. Uh, so you can put some paint on your guns and just kind of paint the maps and just kill everybody with rollers and and all that stuff. I'm I'm sure yeah. that's what that means. <laughs> I'm I am yeah. at yep. 
I'm I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, but uh, platoons they usually have this in every every battlefield game, so that's pretty cool. Um, create and manage any platoon. You can obviously name it, have your own tag emblem, all that stuff. So that's pretty neat. Um, let's see here. I know they're doing a bunch of server stuff, more private server type stuff, which is cool. There's a new feature for a medic revive intent. Oh uh, yeah, I love the patch notes on that. Do that? Do you have them up there? Uh, the last yeah, line I of mean, the patch notes on that area. If they decide to skip anyway, they didn't deserve to be saved in the first place. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty so, good. So, so this this that feature is if you're a medic, you can like signal to someone who's down that you're going for them, so yeah. that they don't just like skip. Because that, that's one of the worst feelings is like running through gunfire to try to revive someone and then they just skipped anyway. Yeah. yeah. So now that, you can I mean, at least let them know. Yeah. And the amount of times I ran over to people when we were playing the, over the weekend and it's like right as I get there, the person decides they're going to respawn themselves and then I die mm-hmm. or whatever because I kind of stuck my nose out there to go save them and stuff. It's like, damn it. Uh, so that's a that's a smart addition uh server administration so there's going to be admins for servers now uh you can set up passwords and all kinds of stuff um they're introducing four new weapons which is cool uh one for each class so there's a new sniper rifle and all kinds of stuff uh new ribbons dog tags and other stuff Mm. that's pretty much it maps and modes just some general fixes yeah yeah that's what this is so yeah a nice solid update coming to battlefield one. Oh boy um i managed to mess stuff up Ugh, i'm adjusting what the video on the fly do? oh boy. i accidentally resized something i didn't want to resize <laughs> it's bad well, there you go it's bad oh no now they're seeing all the all the chunks of meat in this thing oh dear mm. I think we're I just gonna have chunks. to deal with it being a little uneven here. Got a yeah. got an uneven boob job. Yeah, that's it. It's just gonna have to go that way. Yeah, no fixing you know, it. You, Fuck it. You got one one boob that's a little bit a little bit droopier than the other. Maybe I make yours a little bit bigger. There yeah, we go. Fine. That that actually makes sense in real life. So why not? There we go. That's close just... enough. Fuck it. We're gonna we're gonna Fuck roll it. this way. We're not even doing this live. We could be doing this live, but then the video I mean, quality wouldn't be as fuck good. Fuck it, we'll we'll do it live. Is that an announcement, man? Why are you putting this on me? I don't know. Uh, last thought about Battlefield One though is we were playing and we were having a good time. Then we're like, hey, let's switch it up and play some Conquest. And then the <laughs> game literally just died. <laughs> like somehow, I was the game's party system is so fucking. I just can't stand it. I, I know it It somewhat makes sense. You actually party up in the PlayStation uh, network party stuff, and then it just kind of reads it that way and stuff. It still just feels convoluted. But So we were partied up, but then somehow, and I was the party leader, but you were able to start the War Pigeons search, which was weird, and then it wouldn't let you start the Conquest search, so I started it, and then it just kept, it would search for like 10 seconds and then just tell me can't find anything. Mm. It was like, wow, it just, the game just died. And so that really sucked. Mm. Yeah. Hey. That's, that's pretty awful. Yeah. Battlefield is fun. Well, you think we'll ever have a fill world war one? Yeah, Maybe. I think we're, I think Battlefield One is about as much World War One as I need. Yeah, I'd say so. But but oh do you man. think Battlefield, with the next mainline installment, presumably in 2018, do you think it'll go to World War Two, like another shooter? All I all I can tell you is that it will be accused of copying that other shooter. Which happens but to this be other shooters accused of copying the other one, even though it really that's make not sense how game how dev works. Game development works, but 
that's the internet. Call we, of Duty World War Two is official, Frank. Yes, it is, and it's got me very, very hard this week. Yeah, I I kind of agree with you, to be honest with you. This is the most excited I've been for a Call of Duty game in I don't even know how long. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't know mm-hmm. how long it's been since I've been this excited for Call of Duty. I always kind of look forward to Call of Duty, but not like this, because I just feel they are making some smart decisions that we will be getting into. Mm-hmm. Um, so they released a trailer. I saw that trailer. Mm-hmm. That trailer was nice. Used in-game footage, which is probably just a cutscene, you know? Yeah. Because that's that's how they that's how they trick you into thinking that's what the gameplay looks like. But um so some of the details about like how the game just works, it's that's what really has me. Like such as uh no regenerating health. That is the single biggest thing to me with this game. Mhm. That is just insane that they are doing that. I um, I love it. Balls, I love man. it too. I think that is cool. It makes sense. Because it's World War II, uh, but Call of Duty has had health regeneration since Call of Duty 2, I want to say, from like 2005. I mean, they've had it for a long, long time, and this is just – when I read that, I was like, holy shit, I cannot – believe that they're getting rid of that because that's such a big part of the call duty experience. oh i love it i love it yeah me too it's I, it's it, like it's more like the the classic fps's we used to play yeah. like uh doom doom you don't have regenerating health you go pick up a fucking health pack right same with wolfenstein mm-hmm. wolfenstein was like the first one in the past few years to do that and it felt really good mm-hmm. like it yeah. made you just care a little bit more and it was awesome and Especially if you're playing on the hard difficulty, it just makes it that much more intense and, and, and fun. And I'm so happy that they're doing it. I'm happy for it because also I think in the multiplayer, it'll be way up, better off too. Because sometimes you'll just unload into somebody in a Call of Duty game and they just won't fucking die. And I feel with this, you'll have to worry about that stuff a little bit more so people will die quicker and it'll, it'll just feel better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, excited about that and it it, when you do something like that it changes the way you design maps too because then you design maps about having firefights around fighting over like health pickups more than just like strategic positions as well yeah Mm, man Mm. so call of duty world war ii it has its single player mode and it also has a separate co-op campaign which will have a separate story Yes. This is bold. Very, very. Uh, they haven't really said of like what it is or how long it's going to be, but it is a very bold move. Uh, so the single player campaign, uh, you will just be following one guy who is a 19 year old, uh, and you'll just be following him throughout the European theater. So you're not going to be hopping from the European theater down to, you know, Africa and over to Japan or something. Japan. Which, which I like that, you know, you're just gonna, it's good. I, I, my hope for the single player at least is one, you kind of, I hope it sounds from the previews that I've read that they're going in a very more grounded and realistic way. Uh, I mean, Call of Duty's just been so ridiculous, and I imagine there'll be some ridiculous moments, but more of just a horrifying type of way of like, oh, World War II was a horrific thing, and we're going to try to make you feel that type of thing. Uh, and, and you following just this one soldier throughout the whole journey, uh, I and just maybe see him evolve in the relationships that, has that he has with other people around him and just see how war fucks him up yeah and that type of stuff i i just think there's a really good opportunity to create a really great story around that Mm -hmm. um so yeah but then the i mean the co-op thing that's that's pretty uh pretty big i i feel because black ops 3 you were able to do the campaign and co-op and that was a lot of fun but it wasn't its own 
separate thing. I mean, the campaign was sort of designed for that, but having um, a whole separate campaign actually designed for co-op play, that'll be really, really cool. Mm, uh, Yeah, I... Man. The thing is, I think think they learned from the... uh, from Advanced Warfare, where, like, they designed, like, the single-player campaign to be, like, single-player or co-op, and it just didn't really hit the heights of either, really. Yeah. Like, yeah. maybe your AI teammates would be dumb, or maybe having an extra person just really wasn't all that necessary. Like, it just yeah. didn't feel balanced the entire way through. Now, yeah. I, I think it's just smart to separate, like, this is designed, this is tailored to a single-player experience, and this is where you can fuck off and have your friend with you and that's just it's it's just a smart it's encouraging to see them like not try to do both with one single single campaign yeah i agree and not only that is they're going to have a single player campaign a co-op campaign multiplayer and they're also teasing that zombies is coming back too so this game is going to be chock full of shit I mean, that's one thing you can't deny about Call of Duty games, whether you like them or not. They give you some fucking bang for your buck. I mean, as long as you're into everything that it offers, I mean, it's a it's always a really good package. They'll give you hours and hours of entertainment. So, Mm -mm. I'm a little confused with some of the multiplayer stuff here. Um, I was just trying to read through it again, but apparently you join these factions i mean they're they're different uh classes like divisions yeah. like mm-hmm. ar- armor infantry airborne i'm wondering if this is hinting at maybe maybe there will there will be a class-based system like there was in um advanced warfare black ops 3 infinite right. warfare that i i think that's gonna make a return i'm not really a fan of that i like just hey build your build your mm-hmm. fucking whatever i guess i guess they call it a class now but it's it used to just be a loadout right but man huh i i also wonder if they're going to try to do vehicles maybe i i because they did in world like i think the last time they had vehicles was in world at war yeah i yeah i think it would be very cool I just don't know how that fits into the Call of Duty experience, but fuck it, man. Spice it up. Yeah. Why not? That'd be cool. Uh, I think one of the cooler things, and I'm very excited to see how they work with this, is the idea of headquarters, which is almost like the tower in Destiny. So it's this social space where you kind of hang out in interact with people and 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 all that stuff and i guess this is going to replace your normal lobby type of stuff i don't know i i always wondered like what if call of duty adapted this type of stuff uh that destiny did uh and put its own spin on it and this sounds pretty cool dude i don't know it could be neat Mm. for sure yeah, I, I just don't know yeah. how exactly it's going to work. Also, like, do you think they're going to double down and do, like, the normal cosmetic stuff? Like, yeah. Because that's going to be yeah. kind of ridiculous, seeing people on this World yeah. War II battlefield fucking with these emblems that say, like, fucking blaze it. You know there's going to be a bunch of people who are going to take, hey, this is World War II, I can fucking use a swastika as my emblem now. Yeah. It's, it's just going to be a fucking, oh, man. It's going to be a mess out there. Yeah. It, it'll it be interesting, for sure. And I guess there'll probably be, like, emotes that involved and all kinds of stuff. Oh, God, don't even get me... St- they can do so much wrong with this if they take it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Man. But, God, wow. World War II was a long time ago. It was. Holy shit. It's like 80 years ago. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. I think Sledgehammer going back to World War II now just makes sense. 
Oh, it's it's like, the trend. It's going to be the next trend because it is. It is, and it, it just it feels. It's going to be weird to say, but it's it's going to feel fresh because we just haven't seen a shooter like that set in World War II for a long time on these consoles. We haven't, so we'll see World War II look prettier than it's ever looked, which will be cool. Uh, I'm just kind of excited for Call of Duty to kind of go back to its roots as Activision said too of like there's probably going to be no there's going to be no wall jumping and wall running and all kinds of stuff it'll just hopefully be a very grounded thing unless they introduce vehicles or, or something like that but it'll just be more traditional which will be cool it'll still be probably pretty fast paced but uh looking forward to that mm. uh, so, so am I man I th- I haven't been too jazzed on the recent Call of Duty games. Like, I played their campaigns, I dipped my toe in their multiplayers, but, man, I think I think this might... I think going back in time will help me get back into Call of Duty, Call of Duty multiplayer. Oh, man. Yeah, definitely. And uh, one of the modes that they did confirm is coming back is War. Uh, uh, it's sort of modified a little bit, but... Uh, War was really cool in early Call of Duty games, and uh, basically it's a uh, symmetrical Axis versus Allies battlegrounds uh, where one side is trying to take the beach and the other side defends it, sits in bunkers, fucks people up. Hmm. That'll be very cool, too. That all right. Fun. All right. All right. I'm excited for pretty much every aspect of this game way more than I probably was probably for the last Call of Duty 3, 4 mm-hmm. I don't even know man I don't know how mm. long I don't remember the last excited. time I was actually excited for a Call of Duty game because even Modern Warfare that was like oh shit like that that was kind of a surprise like yeah. when that burst onto the scene but since then I don't think there was like a Call of Duty where I was like Oh my god, this is the next Call of Duty. Every other Call yeah. of Duty was like, ooh, here's a new thing to maybe dip into this year. Yeah, I mean, probably Modern Warfare 2 for me. I was super excited for Modern Warfare 2 because of how good Modern Warfare was. And it's like, oh yeah, they're going to do that, that, and then. It's going to be so much better. Uh, so yeah, mm. I, I'm, I'm excited. I had one thing I was going to say, though, but I'm blanking. I do think... Like, I like that Sledgehammer, I mean, their first game, Advanced Warfare, a few years ago, made some very bold moves for Call of Duty at the time. It was the first to really introduce, uh, you know, wall running and and uh, boosting and all that stuff. And it was cool. And I thought its campaign was really cool. Um, so I like that Sledgehammer always just says, fuck it. And we're just going to do what we feel is right and take a bunch of risk in this franchise. It, it's like Call of Duty really needs someone like Sledgehammer to just do a bunch of crazy shit mm-hmm. with it and really change the formula up. So that's cool. Um, I'm going to get in there, just rattle a few cages, do a little yeah. bit of a brawl with the rest of the Call of Duty developers, see who comes yeah. out on top. Yeah. I mean, it'll... It definitely won't be Infinity Ward. I know that. Because they've kind of had three bad games in a row. Sort of. Like, I didn't think Modern Warfare 3 was great. Ghost was awful in it. I liked Infinite Warfare, but it didn't hit where it should have. I am sad that we probably will never see a sequel to Infinite Warfare because I do think that campaign was fucking awesome. Mm Mm-hmm. I like. Really I think cool. we'll see that campaign, that kind of design in their campaign again. But I don't. I'm not sure if it'll even be an Infinity Ward that does it. Oh boy. I agree. November third. No. Yeah, that traditional November release date. Yeah. Mm. And I feel we are getting into that pre E3 time period over the next few weeks, where. Shit's just going to start happening. Mm-hmm. 
developers Shit's are going to start announcing their games. Games are going to start leaking. Yeah, those those press sneak fucks, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, E3 is only like six weeks away. Oh, maybe? yeah, it's it's coming up, man. I'm so. excited because I'll be back there with you, baby. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have a fun time. I'm going to be doing lots of sex. Um, yes. All the sexuals. Might even be playing this next game that we're going to talk about, Brawlhalla. It's coming out this summer, and there's going to be a beta that you can sign up for. For those who don't know, I talked about Brawlhalla early in this podcast's existence. It is kind of like a Smash Brothers game, but it's not those Smash Brothers characters, but it is probably the it is the closest thing to Smash Brothers that isn't like directly just ripping it off. I I think it's a really cool little fighting game. But um, basically you have you have these b- very basic moves that you can do, and each character has like a few special things that they do, or they perform certain moves differently. But it's just very simple, lots of fun. Um, that's all I wanted to say. There is a beta you can sign up for on their website. Um, I don't know what the website's called. Let me open this link in a new tab. It's just uh, bra- beta.brawlhalla.com. You can sign up for that beta. I played it a little bit on PC, and I really enjoyed my time with it. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, This is yeah, cool. releasing summer. Let me see if there's a date here. I don't see a date. It just says summer. So maybe it'll be out by the time I get back, but who knows? Oh, boy. Right on, man. Some just like fun. to shout out some smaller games sometimes. Mm. You know. Give them a shout out. Shout right in their bubbles. But if you don't like small games and small game companies, then I guess I could talk a little bit about Capcom. Yes, so. Yeah, Capcom is is doing good thanks to Resident Evil 7 and Monster Hunter. <laughs> Not surprising. Yeah. But, Resident uh, Evil 7, very well received, sold well. So. Yeah, um, they did announce that they are um, delaying the free DLC for Resident Evil 7 Yeah, by a little bit. But, hey, do what you need to do to release a complete product. Yeah. Basically said that uh, Dead Rising 4, which was an Xbox One and PC exclusive, underperformed. Which is honestly not surprising there. I feel, one, it released at an awful time. It came out, like, December 6th. But then, two, I mean, it probably would have done a lot better if it was on PlayStation. That's that's a huge install base that you're missing out on, man. I just don't... I mean, can't, Microsoft must be shelling out some dollars to, to keep it exclusive. But I'm just going to say here really quick, I'm not a big Dead Rising fan. I don't I think don't... those games are particularly great. Yeah. I don't mind them. I couldn't get into the first one for some reason, but I've been playing the third one, which isn't bad, but yeah, like they always intrigue me, but then I play them and I kind of just get a little bit bored and yeah. Yeah. I can make a giant dildo and smash some fucking zombies with it. whoop de doo da I mean, I I think the most fun of that in that game is actually just making those crazy ass weapons. But once you've done that, there's not much depth to it. Right. I agree. So we'll see if that franchise continues, and if it does, if it's going to remain Xbox exclusive, or I really doubt that. Probably, probably next generation or something. They'll, they'll Dead Rising three and four will come to the PlayStation five, like Dead Rising one and two came to PS four this generation. Although two was on PS three, but yeah, I, I guarantee you that deal with for uh, Dead Rising four happened before Capcom realized that Xbox wasn't going to perform as well as PlayStation. Yeah. Could have been. Because there's no way that you do that knowing that Xbox uh, Xbox isn't going to... Unless they're really paying them a lot of money, in which case that's just a really shitty deal from Microsoft yeah. to do that. I mean, it's still, with Dead Rising 4, it still could have been part of the deal that uh, Dead Rising 3 was. Mm-hmm. That was a launch exclusive for the Xbox One, and uh, maybe maybe they signed a deal of, oh, make two or three games or whatever. One of them was a launch title. I have no clue. But you never know. Maybe this franchise wouldn't continue if it wasn't for Microsoft. Yeah. Then again, wow. you you, yeah. you also don't know if like 
if really Dead Rising, even though it has a name over on Xbox, if like the majority of the PlayStation audience would be even be interested in it. Right. That's especially that's with thing. It, especially with a game like uh, oh, shit. Damn it! What's Ben's Ben's game? I oh. Ben Franklin. No, Bend. Their game. Oh, Days Gone. Days Gone. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with a game like that coming on the way, maybe Dead Rising just doesn't live on the PlayStation 4 as well as it yeah. would. Yeah. Uh, another thing with Capcom, though, is they said that they're continuing, they're going to continue to explore VR, which is good, because VR has seemed a little bit on the the downhill slightly. I mean, there's some good games out there, there's just no one else to play them with. They ha- all happen to lean into multiplayer, which is kind of not a thing people making VR games should do. Yeah, I mean, they either seem to be multiplayer or just like the same shooting galleries over and over and over again, and that just kind of sucks. Mm. Multiplayer just is not not for VR, man. Not right now. It just doesn't have the install base. Like, let's just focus on getting great single-player experiences down. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see if any future Resident Evil games are in VR, like 7. Yeah, I or if any future Resident Evil games are first person, who the fuck knows? Yeah, that's that was definitely a change. Um, speaking of changes, Ooh. Atlas is deciding to change a little bit of its policy about streaming their game Persona Five. Although they didn't, they kind of only put a little bit of a band aid over the problem. Um, so now they. Previously, the policy was don't stream past the date 7-7, which makes sense if you're playing the game. You go by calendar dates. And they updated it to 11-29, which is just before the final chapter starts to ramp up a little bit, that final little bit of story. Um, So that, I guess, makes sense. Uh, It's still kind of dumb that they even have a cutoff date for streaming the game. Yeah. But the major thing they just didn't address at all is that you can't use the share button to fucking even capture things. You can't stream straight from your console. You can't even take screenshots? No, I can't take screenshots, which is like the oh. number one thing that pisses me off because there's a couple of fucking moments that I just wanted to take a screenshot of, of shit. <laughs> That's just not cool, man. Yeah, it's really uh, dumb I mean- and, oh, man. I mean, yeah, streaming from your console, that's a that's another thing, but screenshots, that really pisses me off, and I don't even have the fucking game. Yeah, because... I mean, it, every game lets you do that. It's just ridiculous. It, like, thing, let, you, let people capture the moments that they want to keep. Yeah, and Persona 5 has, su- like, such a great art style that, like, fucking let me share some goddamn screenshots of it, man. Like, there's some really cool fucking... It, just moments that are just awesome pieces of art that I want to share with the world, but I can't because Atlas has its head up its ass. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I have no clue what they're so scared of. I mean, it's uh, just insane. It's going to get out there regardless. It just literally does not matter. Just making um, it more difficult for lazy-ass people like me who just want to take some goddamn screenshots without using a capture card. Yeah. That's just, that. that's crazy. I didn't know that you couldn't even take screenshots at so why, why, why do you think? Why them. do you think I haven't been showing you screenshots? <laughs> yeah, uh, the original date was like yeah seven seven, right? Have you gotten past that date yet? Yes, I have. Was it like a super important date? No, it was completely arbitrary. <laughs> wow. I mean, it did start. Right uh, that was. It is sort of related to some one of the story arcs. But, like, it isn't necessarily even, like, a huge reveal for the game. Like, it's just, like, hey, this guy has a palace. Hey, this guy has a palace. Go take out his palace now. It's it's just, like, you identify a bad guy, okay? And it's not even, like, the big bad guy. Mm. Yeah, that's lame. That's super, super lame, man. Mm. Uh, it, it, it sucks. Hopefully, in you know... Hopefully, in the future, Atlas realizes that they they fucked us up. It's it's but Atlas I, Japan, Atlas America, yeah, uh, Atlas I guess USA. I guess that's what they're technically called. Uh, they're they're the ones fighting back, trying to help us get what we want. But man, you think they you think Japan 
would be able to just look at, like, open their freaking internet and see that there are people out there streaming a shit ton of games, and those games are doing just fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's free advertising, dude. Man. Oh. And especially with a game that's as good as Persona 5, I mean, that's it's just insane mm-hmm. that they're just being so, still so restrictive. I mean, this is better than what it was, but it's still, still not where it should be. Mm. Oh, boy. Well, that's enough about Persona. I think I'm going to finish that game this weekend. Really? Wow. I still have a shit ton to do, but I really want to fucking get through it. Like, yeah. I am determined. I was, uh, this was like maybe a week or two ago. I was just looking at the trophies that you got in Mass Effect Andromeda compared to what I have. Yeah. Uh, and, like, I'm 40 hours into the game and I'm just about to finish it. And I'm just like, how the fuck did Frank beat this game so quick? And you got, like, every trophy for the loyalty missions and you 100% of all the plan stuff. I know, like, you have way more free time than me, but you, like, beat the fucking shit out of that game so quick. And it's like, I was like, holy crap. But mm. here you go. I, I just have a tendency to, like, there are certain types of games that I just get through fast. And Bioware games just happen to fit that mold. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Earlier I spoke of determination. It seems yeah. as though Vivendi is determined to take over Ubisoft. Um, they are. Is this, uh, sources, sources say that this is happening. Uh, I believe Reuters ran a report saying that Vivendi is expected to move forward and acquire the majority share of Ubisoft by the end of this year. Man. They currently own 25.15% of Ubisoft. We'll see. I don't... Yeah. It, it is an unwelcome takeover. <laughs> A, what they call in business, hostile takeover. Yeah. I mean, this is the type of shit that happens when you're, when you're a publicly traded company. Mm-hmm. Like Ubisoft, and that just... I can't imagine... Like, I, I sit here and go, man, that really sucks that Vivendi's doing this. But I just absolutely cannot imagine, you know, sitting there and being like, we literally can't really do anything about this. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, it's just going to happen. And hopefully when Vivendi inevitably does take over Ubisoft, they don't fucking run them into the ground or make them change direction because Ubisoft still does make good games and they do t- still take risk even within the AAA space from time to time that are pretty cool. Uh, hopefully Vivendi doesn't screw with that. Yeah, know? it's just interesting. I'm really curious what Vivendi does when it does get control. Like, it's... I, I, I'm just... I'm curious, but I also... I don't want... I don't want to see this happen, but I also want to know what would ha- what's going to happen. So, I, I don't know. It's just weird. I, I've i kind of fallen out of the Ubisoft formula of games. Like, they just... They, they have a certain type of game, and that type of game just doesn't... I don't like checkboxes as much as Ubisoft would like me to like checkboxes. Yeah. Yeah. The... Vivendi owned... Activision a few years ago and it didn't go super well so hopefully with Ubisoft it goes a lot better I don't know it just is weird because Vivendi like doesn't really do anything in the video game space anymore but they just like are creeping their fucking dicks all over the place and just rubbing them wherever they want it's, they're a weird company I'm a little bit envious I'd like to rub my dick wherever I want. Yeah, All over your face and your tits. Yeah. Mm. I love tits. Is your internet working? Yes. It is working. Cool. Yes. That's awesome because we're getting towards that part of the show. But before we get to that part of the show, we have some really exciting news to share with you. Tyler, hit him with it. PlayStation Plus. Free games. 
for May. May. 2017. We got Tales from the Borderlands on PlayStation 4. Abzu on PlayStation 4. Port Royale 3, Pirates and Merchants on PS3. Blood Knights on PS3. Laser Disco Defenders on Vita, which is crossed by with PS4. And Type Rider on the Vita, which is crossed by with PlayStation 4. Mm. I think if you haven't played Tales from the Borderlands, that is a fantastic game, and you should play that. That is Definitely the last will. Tales game I'll ever play, if unless they make another Tales from the Borderlands. But, you mean Telltale? Yeah, Telltale game. Yeah. It's probably the last good Telltale game. I mean, I liked Batman, but Tales from the Borderlands was really good. Uh, I'm excited to play Abzu, though. I've been wanting to check this one out for a while. Mm. So, I liked what I played when I played it at PAX East two years ago when we were there, and I know it came out last year. It was pretty solid. Mm. I'm excited. I mean, the rest of the lineup is not great. I just don't know what Sony does, I, you know, mm-hmm. because if they don't give people six games, I just wonder if they'll get upset. Yeah, you know? but the thing is, those game. why are you even giving people PlayStation 3 games? Yeah, why? I just wonder the numbers on those because they're not they're even just kind of PlayStation 3 out. games. Like, I'd understand yeah. if you were given, like, right. the best shit out on PlayStation 3 like to keep those people satisfied who are still back there. I but Jesus Christ, either drop it or improve the fucking lineup. Yeah. I I would personally rather than just drop PlayStation 3 and just give you four PlayStation 4 games. Maybe all those games are a little bit of a higher quality, I mean, you know, two of them maybe they're crossed by with Vita. Even Vita is getting a stretch a little bit. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And, like, maybe give away a PS1 Classic. Yeah. Maybe cool. make PS1 Classics work on PlayStation 4. Yeah. How yeah. about that? Cool. Why not? Oh, man. Yeah. You know, we could, we could pray to the heavens all we want, but they ain't listening. Nope. Oh, man. Mm-mm-mm. Well, if you like to look down on people who take free games and play those and you're like well you know back in my day we used to pay for video games well you can still do that and there are new video games you can pay for this week yeah i will start you off here with arcade archives neo geo galaxy fight universal warriors Galaxy Fight Universal Warriors is a fighting game released by Sunsoft in 1995. In a world that was destroyed by the destructors of the universe, eight warriors challenge each other to a fight. Next up is the game Crossout, which is actually crossed out on this list, so it's not actually out. Uh, Next up is uh, Death State on PlayStation 4 Digital. Death State is a roguelike bullet hell adventure set in a bizarre world of dimensional exploration play as a number of unique characters trying to discover the fate of professor uh, ellenberg who opened a portal to the void are you ready to venture deep into the abyss i'm ready ready to venture deep into something tyler mm. Mm, 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 and that's you Oh, why don't I venture into you? Get all inside. Make you feel a little bit ch- more cheery. No, that's against my <laughs> religion. I I follow the teachings of the Deer God, which is a video game. Oh. <laughs> On PlayStation 4 and Vita, digital cross-buy. The Deer God is a breathtaking 3D pixel art adventure that will take that will challenge your beliefs and your platforming skills. It's a game about survival, reincarnation, and karma, all set in a breathtaking and unique 3D pixelized world. When you say challenge your platforming skills, I'm out. Yeah, you're yeah, you're done. <laughs> if it's a 2D game, although this says 3D, so maybe maybe mm-hmm. they'll be better. So yeah. Next up is Dragon Age Heroes 2 on PlayStation. That's 4. Dragon Quest, not Dragon Age. Oh yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Read that wrong. Dragon Quest Heroes 2 on PlayStation 4 Digital and Retail. After a thousand years of peace, 
the seven realms suddenly collapse into conflict as if guided by a mysterious and malicious force. Now you must lead a band of powerful heroes in a quest to defeat evil and save the war-torn world. So this is the Dynasty Warriors-like version of Dragon Quest. Mm. Sure, I get that right. There's been a lot of Dragon Quest games over the past few years, which yeah. is cool. I mean, hopefully uh, Dragon Quest Eleven, I believe, is the next mainline one. Hopefully that actually releases over here. It is. It's, it's going to. Very, very closely to the J- Japanese release. So. Mm. Yeah. Next up, we have Eventide, Slavic Fable. <laughs> Eventide, Slavic Fable, is an exciting adventure game inspired by Slavic mythology. Set in a contemporary heritage park where mythical Slavic creatures coexist with humans. The adventure begins when the protagonist, a famous botanist, receives an alarming invitation from her grandmother, the park's curator. This art is very weird. You got, like, uh, like Barbara Dunkelman just sitting there just staring at you, and then you got, like, her goat dad in the background just being all pissed off. Mm. It's bizarre. Next up is The Legend of the Dark Witch on PlayStation Vita Digital. The the Saiega crystals have always bestowed great power on people, but now someone has stolen them all, and the world is drowning in darkness. Help the witch Sizau recover the stolen crystals. Mm. Sizu. I like some Sizu. I like some crystal. Yeah. Next up we have Little Nightmares. Available on PlayStation 4 Digital and Retail. Immerse yourself in Little Nightmares, a dark, whimsical tale that will confront your, confront you with your childhood fears. Help Six escape the Maw, a vast, mysterious vessel inhabited by corrupted souls looking for their next meal. <laughs> next up is Outlast 2 on PlayStation 4 Digital. Outlast 2 introduces you to Sullivan Knopf and his followers who left our wicked world behind to give birth to Templegate, a town deep in the wilderness and hidden from civilization. Noth and his flock are preparing for the tribulations of the end of times, and you're right in the thick of it. This game seems very creepy. Oh, God. Did you mm. ever play the first one? I tried to play the first one. I noped the fuck out of it. (laughs) Yeah. Me too. It was it was a creepy game, and this one just looks even more creepy, so there you go. Mm. Um, the Outlast Trinity is also available. You can get Outlast 1, uh, it's DLC Whistleblower, and the new Outlast 2. Not much to really say about that. We'll move on to Period. Cube Shackles of Amadeus. All right. In search of your older brother's whereabouts, you join the online RPG Arcadia in hope of discovering clues. Having lost consciousness after being drawn into a mysterious light, you wake up within the game's fantasy world. However, the only way to escape this world of life or death is to clear the game. Mm. Next up is Puyo Puyo Tetris on PlayStation 4 Retail. Two puzzle game juggernauts collide as Tetris, one of the largest selling and recognized brands in gaming history, and Puyo Puyo, Puyo wow, uh, from Sega have combined to create a fun to play, fast paced, competitive party game like no other. Mm-hmm. Puyo Puyo mm-hmm. Tetris. That's there you go. I said it. Mm. Yes, you did. This game seems neat though. Have you seen this? No, I haven't. I does. This seemed like it could be very fun to play with each other. Basically, one's playing Puyo Puyo, Puyo Puyo, and the other one's playing Tetris, and you're, like, sending shit at each other and trying to outlast each other. It's like a best of three mm. type of thing. It seems neat, for sure. Yes. Oh, boy. Here we have a really violent game with really bad boys. River City Me- Melee Battle Royale Special. The most popular melee battle from the River City franchise is back with new and improved action. Enjoy the great battle royale action with up to four teams at once. Wow. 
right on. Mm. Next up is Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment on PlayStation 4 Digital. Take control of Spectre Knight, servant of to the Enchantress, in a quest to recruit a cadre, 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 cadre of knights, and create the Order of No Quarter. Experience perfect platforming, world class visuals, impeccable stage design, incredible music, and even meet a friend or two in Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment. Mm, I am excited. I want to play some more Shuffle Knight. Yeah, looks. You're cool. probably not too excited. <laughs> I I like Shovel Knight a lot. I'm just very very bad at Shovel Knight. Like uh, very you, bad. At you never Knight. beat it, did you? No, I got to like the second to last stage. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just gonna we'll leave it at that. We'll have to play I'm a co-op gonna... sometime, and you'll see how bad I really am. Okay. Okay. It'll it'll make you sad. Yep. I'm sure it will. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 available on PlayStation 4 Digital and in retail stores. Go behind enemy lines with the ultimate modern military shooter. Play as an American sniper dropped in Georgia near the Russian border, not Florida. Choose your own path to accomplish your missions across an unforgiving open world. Heard this game had really bad performance problems. Took about five minutes for someone to load into the game on PlayStation wow. 4. An wow. entire five fucking minutes. Yeah. yeah I would. And I also. Mm, Good. I would not stand for that. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't either. I would just be like, fuck this shit. Um, I also heard the open world is not very good. Mm. Mm. It's not getting the best of reviews. Next up is Static on PlayStation VR Digital. Static. It's a VR game about solving puzzles in a place you don't know with a person you don't recognize in hands that aren't completely yours. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I like... Well, no. I'm not, not going to go there. Um, Siberia 3 is the next game on the list here available on PlayStation 4 Digital and Retail. Join Katie Walker, or Kate Walker. It is Kate Walker. Yes. A heroine beyond compare. In the unique world of Siberia, dive into the story, puzzles, and mysteries of this fabulous adventure, conceived and drawn by Benoit Sokal, with music by Enon Zur. Boom. Next up is Symphony of the Machine on PlayStation VR Digital. An ancient tower stands in a barren land. Ascend it and discover its mysterious powers. With the tower's guardian by your side, conduct the weather to breathe life back into the lands around you. Immerse yourself in the beauty of Symphony of the Machine's world. Conducting the weather to breathe life back into the lands around you Sounds like Mass Effect and Drum. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Copycats. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, next up we have Valhalla Hills Definitive Edition on PlayStation 4, Digital and Retail. You are Liko, youngest son of Odin. Exiled to Midgard by your father for failing to meet his expectations. Far from home, you will fi now find yourself with a disgruntled band of outcast Vikings. To get back, you will have to lead them across the mountains of Valhalla Hills, where a portal awaits to take you to your rightful place in the realm of the gods. Boom. If they're mountains, why do they call them hills? I don't know. It's <laughs> a good question. Next up is What Remains of Edith Finch for PlayStation 4 digital. digital. What Remains of Edith Finch is a collection of strange tales about a family in Washington State. As Edith, you'll explore the colossal Finch house, searching for stories as she explores her family history and tries to figure out why she's the last one in her family left alive. And woo, we got the highlight of the week here at the end, folks. Yes. Zombier. Wow. <laughs> Available on PlayStation 4 digitally. Drink Zombier to stay human. 
Resist luscious zombie cheerleaders, exotic dancers, mimes, and a very suspicious guy in a thong. Wow. <laughs> this art is fucking just Woo! priceless. Man, that's a game. Yeah. That sounds ridiculous. Just <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Oh, man, you're going to drink some zombie beer? Hell yeah. We're going to listen to that new Incubus? <laughs> Hell yeah, why not? Mm. Actually, I think I'll listen to that new Brad Paisley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 soundtrack. Or, you could, or hold, stay with me, you could watch Fifty Shades Darker. Drinking why not? Some, drinking some zombie beer, watching Fifty Shades Darker. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen Fifty Shades of Grey? Nope. <laughs> I have an experience, thankfully dude. avoided these movies. See, by virtue of being ha- single. Yes, when you have a girlfriend, you will be forced to watch that movie. It is one of the most awful movies I've ever seen. It is it is a trip. So I'll probably have to watch this one at some point. I want. To. Oh man, man, that's some that's some good material, I guess. Yeah, they keep making more. Yeah, they're making another one. Mm. So why not? Do you play hard? I fuck hard. Oh I don't yeah, play. Fuck. All right, all fuck. right. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. You you're gonna be fucking that Mass Effect hard this weekend. Yes. I'm going to be playing a game I can't oh. talk about. Oh. And Persona. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. And I'm so excited. I just want this week to be over. Me I too. Just, I just want to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean, man. Uh, I, I I know those weeks. They're awful. Uh, all I right. just kind of want to sleep and be alone. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's just me. Mm. Well, uh, I can help you be alone. By ending the show. Eh. I enjoy doing this. Mm, that's what you say while we're on air. We're not actually yeah. on air. None of this is on air. Nothing is on air anymore except actual radio. Yeah. But regardless, I love you. Love you. And we love our listeners. And we would love it if you'd leave us some comments. Some good comments, some thoughtful comments, some comments that require a human brain. Give us some reviews. Yes, on iTunes. On iTunes? Whatever podcast service you use. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're watching it on YouTube. You can find us on Twitter at PS Report Podcast. You can find us via email. Well, you can't find us. You can send us an email at PlayStationReportPodcast at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at the Arctic Sloth. Please at me. And you can find Don't. my good friend Tyler here at Plugged On Vids. At him too. Yeah. Just just at the fuck out of us. Yeah, that's that's all I want you to do is just to hit There's some, at- there's some assholes out there. Who are like, don't at me. We're like, yo, come on. Just at us. At us. Yeah. This has been episode 59. Man. Ten more episodes and we can do a fun one. Yeah. Mm. We can actually do a 69 and podcast at the same time. Whew. How's that going to time out? Is that going to time out right? I'm going to have to look that up. Probably not. It's going to be a little bit late. Um, yeah. Yeah, just keep being good. Keep being good people. We're going to see you yes. next week. We're going to have some more news to talk about. I'm going to finish Persona and talk a little bit about that. We're probably going to get our first hands on Prey, maybe. We'll see. Maybe. We'll see how time works. But we hope to see you next week. Thanks, and goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>